Well, I've been doing a lot of research because I'm working on a couple of books at the moment, so I retreated from everyone and uh, <clears throat> probably just as well because I came down with this nasty cold, which was quite contagious and it's taken me three weeks to get where I am now. My energy's good, I just sound terrible. So please bear with me. Well, well, good. <clears throat> uh, Seer Ram, a philosopher, said, you cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude toward what happens to you. And in that, you will be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. So I want to talk a little bit today about relationships. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of um, work in regards to trying to help other people understand where they're at, where they're going. This has been a lifelong journey and in it, through my own experiences, I try to pass on to you what I've learned and come to understand so that you get a bigger, bigger picture of where we're at. So my topic today is on relationships. When you meet certain people, you will often find yourself considering spending more time with them because of the way they stimulate you, your interaction with them. They make you feel good when you're around them. Therefore, you may want to have a relationship with them. You may even decide you love them. However, if you are aware that most of what is happening is that they are triggering an intense degree of self-awareness within you, you might manage to avoid the problems that can arise when you say, I love you to them, with all its potential for confusion and pain. How many times do we say to our family and friends, I love you, when we mean, I really enjoy being in your company. If you could do this, your relationship with this person would be real. Your vision would be clear enough to see whether you had the possibility of actually relating harmoniously to the other person at all the different levels of being. And what I'm talking about is often people stimulate us in our mind, physically, or how we relate to the rest of the world. It, love love is, is an emotion that's inside. It's you, okay? Love is what we call it, but it's actually a reaction to the person you're with. When someone can give you the experiences of your own soul, your own love, it does not follow that you could live happily together all the time. If you were to take a step back and examine the effect of the contact that you have with the people involved in your life by simply asking yourself, which parts of you being are you feeling stimulated by the contact with them? An example, suppose you want to examine the effect of your contact with, say, your best friend. Ask yourself the following questions. Do they stimulate me mentally or emotionally? Do I enjoy doing things with them and being in their physical presence? Do they help me be in touch with my own feelings? Each of these questions relates to one of the dimensions of your being. And we're talking about mind, body, and soul, respectively. You should be able to instantly see which parts of you are being stimulated by the connection between you and your best friend. If your friend was to do the same exercise, the answers could well be different from yours. It is vitally important in your quest for spiritual development that all dimensions of your beings be fully activated at all the time. For without this, you would never be able to fully integrate your three selves, body, mind, and soul. Bearing this in mind, please do not interpret what I'm sharing with you as criticism of the effect or the involvement with other people in your life, as I'm talking about my personal experiences. I'm sharing my awareness with you. I have had, I've lost many friends over the years because we've come to an impasse. We've done for each other what we can in being a friend, and one of us has evolved faster than the other, and simply we've moved out of that friendship. It's not right, it's not wrong, it just simply is, and you need to understand that. Sometimes uh, we are the ones that are left behind because we haven't evolved enough emotionally to get past where it is. You need to understand that as well. Alternatively, 
You may not look elsewhere, but spend hours talking with you. Oh, sorry, I missed a paragraph. When you stand back and look at relationships in this way, it's easy to see how discord can arise. You become attached to people because of the stimulation you receive in their presence. I don't know how many times people have said to me, I really want to spend more time with you. And I've had people that are becoming mediums come and say, I, I, you know, I, I want to mentor under you. I want to spend all my time with you. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, my ego is charged. But in, in actuality, they have to learn their own lessons and grow their own way. Sitting with someone and, and learning some of the techniques that they use is wonderful, but you have to find your own way. There's no, there's no right or wrong way for anyone. You have to find what's comfortable for you. The difficulties arise when, for some reason, they no longer stimulate. Oh, sorry. You become attached to people because of the stimulation received in their presence. In fact, some of you will ensure that they stay a part of your lives by marrying them. <laughs> Difficulties arise for, when some, for some reason they no longer stimulate your being as they once did. Perhaps they have undergone some radical change or growth. You know, major illnesses, um, car accidents, uh, many, many things come into play and we have to remember all of this. When and if this happens, you may end up leaving them and looking for the stimulation elsewhere. Alternatively, you may not look elsewhere, but spend hours talking with your partner about why they no longer stimulate you. How many of our friends have done that? I've seen it happen over and over again with some of my clientele. And I say to them, you know, why don't you look at yourself and figure out where you want to go and what you want to do? If this person is where you belong, if you have reason to stay, if you have children, if you have financial things going on, understand that and then look at educating yourself or doing something that really makes you happy so that you can maintain what you have with this individual. Again, it's about your growth and where you're going. Often you end up blaming them for their inadequacy. In this case, you may stay with your partner and accept the loss of contact with that part of your being that they stimulated. Okay? Though it is unlikely that you will feel no sense of loss whatsoever and you will at some level blame them for it. That happens an awful lot again. Then again, you may stay with them and seek necessary activation elsewhere. And if you're married, this is a recipe for disaster. This, is, this happens all too often. Instead of recognizing that they could find uh, a, a lot of people that are involved in marriages where, where they, the connection's not there anymore, what they need to do is focus outside of the marriage and do some things that will stimulate them, getting involved with children, uh, getting involved in activities in the community that advance the, uh, the community are, are great ways of putting your energy into something that's going to bring you back that feeling and love and peace and tranquility within you. doesn't mean you need to be disrespectful of your partner. It means that you need to recognize that within you something is missing and you need to uh, bring joy and happiness back into your life. Fundamentally, this kind of situation arises because you allow yourself to depend on the people involved in your life to always stimulate a certain part of you. What you should be doing is learning to activate those aspects of your being yourself. Then you do not need to involve yourself with other people just because of the way they stimulate you. That's why outside activities really help out. When you have reached this state, there is finally a possibility for you to begin relating to the people around you. When you recognize that this is something that's happening within you, now you can see people in, in, in the truth that happens within your relationship. You can recognize that that person's in your life to help you, to help you grow. And if you can't do anything about this other aspect at the moment, that's okay. It will change when it needs to. But you need to stay, stay active so that spiritually you're growing on whatever level, mentally, emotionally, or physically, wherever you need to be doing, okay? It could also be being involved more in sports. There's no set pattern. It's what is going to bring you the internal joy and peace and happiness that you need within your life. This activation of your being is a vital and natural part of your growth towards self-awareness and the creation character. It is simply that most of you will get stuck at this first stage. And how many times have we let go of a friendship 
as we have outgrown the individual. Right? To relate to someone is to engage in an exchange and transformation of consciousness. Are you aware of that? It's an exchange of consciousness. You know, it's very interesting because with my, uh, with Tommy, the kid's dad, he, he was an intellectual and I found that being around him was so stimulating because he looked at, at life in a much different perspective than I did. And so we would have these um, banterings. We would have nights of, uh, of, of hours and hours sitting with a bottle of wine conversing about our thoughts about the universe and where it was going. To me it was very challenging because he looked at the world in a completely different way than I did. Of course being a police officer didn't hurt. He always had a negative aspect to so many things. And we'd have these ongoing conversations. To me it was so stimulating. Okay, And when he was no longer there it, it was a great loss. Um, these are the people that help you help you grow because they're making you think about the things in a different way than you would normally have thought about it. That's the challenge um, in being here in our world, looking at things in much different perspectives. You know, our, the people that we have in our life are often very comfortable for us, but we need the challenge of people that look at things in different ways. That's why the world is the way it is. We have to look at different aspects so that we as spiritual beings can move forward. If you bear in mind that consciousness is the carrier of information from the different levels of your being, then relate to another to communicate with another. The truest, purest form of communication possible. When you're sharing your thoughts and ideas and your dreams and desires, you're actually communicating at a soul level. A true relationship is always a two-way process. It's not t someone telling you what to believe or how to believe. It's engaging you in dialogue to discuss things. You give of your own consciousness and partake of that, of another. Remember, at a soul level, we must constantly be evolving in order to grow. When you look deeply at relating to others, it can be tempting to say that the consciousness is not connected and flowing in situations which is characterized by arguments or distrust. That's not true. It just means that you're, you're on different wavelengths. You're not seeing eye to eye. You don't have to. Soul growth is about learning. How many people do you know don't understand some of our, our, our spiritual ways? And we try to explain to them and their eyes glaze over and roll, okay? It's because they haven't gotten there yet. It's not right or wrong. They have to get to that level. They have to be open to understanding and listening to what we're about in order to move forward. And the same with us with other religions. They're, they're not wrong in what they're doing. They simply have different perceptions of how things are. So by talking to them and, and explaining where you're coming from and listening to them, you get a better idea of what's going on. I recently did a, a reading for someone who had turned to Islam and was raised in the United States in the end, um, and she wears that thing over her head. She doesn't wear the mask. But the, and I said to her, um, being raised in the U.S., how did you get comfortable with that? And she said, well, she said, I decided to, to become totally involved in religion, so I decided that if I was going to do that, I was going to wear the garb. And I said, how's it worked out? She said, well, it's interesting, because she said, when I'm here in the States, she said, I, I don't always have it on. Over there, I do, because it's part of the tradition. But she said, now, when I'm without it, she said, I feel lost. I, I feel incomplete without it. Isn't that interesting? I found that quite a bit, uh, an interesting statement. But again, it's about the mind. It's, you know, you are what you think you are. So she's now uh, very pro-Islamic. And I'm not knocking the Islamic, I'm just giving you a scenario. Um, <clears throat> These things often indicate a level of relating in which the connection is very intense. It is a mistake to assume that a powerful flow of consciousness between two people has to manifest in peace and harmony. 
How many times have you had someone close to you that you had a disagreement? Doesn't mean that, that you dislike them, you distrust them. It just means that you have different opinions. It has a lot to do with your experiences in life, what you have learned through your own personal experiences. No one can take that away from you. Your life and your experiences are only yours. The actual way in which relating manifests is often governed by the mental selves or egos of two people involved, okay? When you get into the bantering with someone, it's about your ego. You're, you know, you may not like what they're saying because on an ego level, you're having a problem with it. I've had this issue. Don't get yourself. I'm human. However, in a relationship between two people who have achieved a degree of integration between different dimensions of their being, you can be sure that the kind of interaction that is occurring between them will reflect the understanding of the higher selves of the people involved. Okay, so you take a step back and you go, okay, that's their belief system, I don't have to agree with it, but I understand where they're coming from because it's their experience in life. And that's what's really important. <clears throat> An understanding of the kind of experience needs the lessons that they have to be learned in order that they live their lives fully. When consciousness is not connected and flowing, when there is no relating or stimulating, the most practical manifestation will be the quality of indifference between the people concerned. Okay, how many people have had to walk away from others? Because you just can't relate, and you just can't connect, and you just don't get where they're coming from. You know, we've had to walk away from them, haven't we? If the people in the scenario are still living together, then it will most likely be for other reasons outside the actual relationship between two people. Um, children, financial, cultural. While many people in these sort of circumstances might feel they could still continue growing towards spiritual unity and truth, they're stuck. And that's why I say you need to do something outside of the relationship. If you need to stay in that relationship, you need to do something else that helps you grow spiritually um, and not extramarital affairs. <laughs> Growth can only happen when consciousness is flowing and when love is an active force within your being, when you're relating fully to the people around you, okay? And all of this has to be done without judgment. If you're gonna stay in a relationship that's not absolutely the best for you, for whatever reason, I don't want you to be judgmental about it, just recognize that there's other areas of your life that you need to take care of at the time, okay? <clears throat> there are many problems and confusions that can arise in your relationship with others. Problems that are specific to different levels of dimension of your being. If we look at the problems that are unique to the soul dimension, the probability of major problem is always surrounding love. Surprisingly, considering the primary role that most of you probably feel it has to your relating to another, we say that love in itself has no deep meaning or significance in relating. The truth is, the fact is that for most of you, love is little more than a mental concept, a set of opinions that you hold concerning emotions that you expect to feel when you're relating to someone. When we, when we feel a connection to someone, we say, I love you. The truth is, that connection to the other person is the emotions that they stimulate within you that is your love. And so you feel connected to that other person. Most of these emotions are learned in growing up through observation and acceptance through our experiences. Think about it, your family, your grandparents, the people around you, you see how what, what love is to them, and often we take on those concepts or those ideas. The reality is that love is in your soul. It is simply what and who you are in the dimension. You have much of your being in love. To be in love, you must be love. The nature of your soul consciousness is love. You are love when your soul consciousness shines both through you, affecting all dimensions of your being, and outwards towards others from your soul body. Do you get that? Love is within. You are love. 
And when you connect to another, it's the recognizing of that energy from that other person. Only when you are loved are you truly a radiant being. Think about someone who's just newly in love. Don't they just radiate and beam love all over the place and shine and you, you know, can't, can't stop the bubbling and all of that? I think it's terrific. Love has very little to do with relationships. In your relating to others, your love is actually meaningless. It is simply love. Your love has no real relevance to anyone except you. It will not necessarily change anyone else. The power of love is power for the self, yourself. It can only change you. Think about it. How many times have we wished for someone around us to change? And we send them all the love we can. It never changes them. The only one that can change them is themselves. All we can do is surround them with love and hope that at some point they will see what they need to see in order to move forward. Your love, your soul self, and your consciousness has impact on the people you relate to. But it's only their love that will truly change them. Love like caring should not be confused. To care for another human being is a natural part of relating well to them. However, pragmatically speaking, the fact that within yourselves you are often separate from your own body, soul, and that caring for another can become a way of not dealing with your own inability to care for yourself. Do you get that? Sometimes, you know, when we have something wrong with us, if we focus on someone else, then we don't have to deal with what we're dealing with. Broken heart, health issues, whatever. We, we put all of our attention on them. But believe it or not, that can be positive. It's not initially, but it can be in the outcome. If you allow your caring or healing of another, no matter how distorted or neurotic your ego, <coughs> you, to do so, to maintain a strong perception of true soul, by reaching down into the deepest level of your soul, then it will transform you. Basically, you become this by maintaining a strong perception of the true soul basis of the act of caring for another. Do you get that one? Okay. How many people do we know are really sick and then they spend all the time trying to heal someone else? If they're doing it from, from deep within and, and the true love, the true reasoning of truly trying to help other people move forward, eventually that caring for them is going to change them within. And that's one of the most powerful things that can help a person move forward when they get stuck. Your caring for others will then become a part of your spiritual practice and will help you to expand your likeness with your higher self, keeping the gateways open and the path clear. How many times have we seen people who become, they become fanatical about spiritual healing in one form or another. It doesn't have to be spiritual, just healing. And, they, and they're just so focused on it and eventually you start to see the transformation within that person. So that can be very, very positive. You know, everything in life is about experiencing. These needs and desires and many other ones of similar nature are whispers from your soul as it seeks to become one with all dimensions of your own being and that of others. You know, we have this innate ability with us, okay? If, if we have difficulty coping with something in our lives, then our soul finds another way to help us heal, to move us forward in whatever capacity we need. We just have to listen to that internal little whisper that's saying, okay, I can't cope with this myself, but if I start helping this person over here, then that healing will happen within. I've seen it happen so many times. It's wonderful to watch. Few people enjoy powerful struggles in their relationships. Independence is perhaps the major issue that people avoid exploring by relating to others. To know that oh, the only person who can provide you with the things that you need in life. You are the only person who will always need you no matter what you give and give you total unconditional love. You are the only person you can trust completely. You are the only person who can be totally consistent in terms of feelings and emotions. 
You are the only person who can reassure you. In simple terms, being independent is knowing that the only person who can make you happy and sad is you. The responsibility is yours. Being independent is not blaming someone else for something that is your responsibility. The truth is, and you already know this, it is all your responsibility. You created it. Only you can change it. Most relationships are constructed as to prevent any kind of realization concerning the nature of independence. Do you understand we become so dependent on others, we blame them for when we have something going wrong in our lives. Instead of saying, ooh, I don't like what I've created, I need to make some changes in my life so that I'm happier about what's going on, we start blaming the other person. Wrong attitude. Take control of your life. This is because they're based on one person providing for the certain need of the other person, and vice versa. The relationship is a bargain wherein neither person must grow out of their dependency on the other if it's to last. Why do you think we have so many divorces? People outgrow one another. Should the partnership actually grow out of the need for the other to provide for them? The bargain can no longer be upheld. Both partners will begin to feel dissatisfied, and ultimately, the relationship will fail. If the partner who has achieved growth and independence stays, they often feel resentful, and they will feel as if they're getting nothing in return. Try seeing yourself as the actor in the play that, that is your life. An actor who plays many parts in the same play, but who does it for sheer pleasure and enjoyment of acting. In your life, your performance should be done for fun, as opposed to an actor in a stage play who does it for adulation and the money. Try and remember that even the very best stage has to have some good and bad things. You won't feel hurt if you do not take it too seriously. Who you really are is how you feel when you are on the stage of life. How do you feel at this moment? Are you happy about where you are, what you're doing? Your true identity will become clearer and concrete if you work with all the understanding that love is what you are and the awareness of the surest route to discovering who you are. And remember the famous words, all the world is a stage and we are the actors on the stage. And I want to leave you with one line, trust. You never know what the next moment will bring. Now stay. Okay. Stay.